Now that we know how to draw free body diagrams and we know how to use 2D rectangular components, if we combine both of those methods together, we'll be able to solve problems that are in 2D equilibrium. And when we're solving these 2D equilibrium problems, we are typically looking for an unknown force or unknown forces. And we are going to use two different equations in order and solve them simultaneously. So the first thing I want to do is show you what these two equations are. Now, to get this equation, the first thing we need to do is go back to a main equation in physics. We have the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So this is Newton's second law. And when we're dealing with statics and we're dealing with equilibrium, things are not moving. Uh, they are staying still. They have these forces applied to them, but they're in equilibrium, which means they aren't moving. So because they're in equilibrium, this side of the equation is going to go towards zero. And we should need to remember that right now it's a vector equation. And from this vector equation, we're working with 2D equilibrium. So we are going to get two equations out of this. If we break up this vector equation, we're going to get the sum of the forces in the X are equal to zero and the sum of the forces in the y are equal to zero. And right here, these are the two equations of equilibrium. So here's my equations of equilibrium. And both of these equations are scalar equations. So they aren't vectors anymore. And we can just use the 2D rectangular components in the X and the Y accordingly. And right now we have two equations. So that means at most we can solve for two unknowns. Two equations, uh, two unknowns. So let's go over the steps we will need to take in order to solve a 2D equilibrium problem. For this, uh, the first step, step one, is always draw a free body diagram. And when we draw this free body diagram, we need to indicate the sense of all of our forces, so which way they're pointing, and the magnitude if we know them. If we don't know the magnitude of a force, then we're going to keep it as a variable and it's going to be unknown. Step two, we are going to apply the different equations of equilibrium that we have right here. From these equations of equilibrium, we're going to look at our x direction and our y direction. So a lot of the times I'll choose the, to the right to be positive, to be up to be positive, but this is a free choice. So what direction is positive is a free choice. But from that free body diagram, we wanna gather everything that's in the x direction, everything that's in the y direction, add them if they're in a positive direction, subtract them if they're in the negative direction. Step three, we want to solve equations of equilibrium for the unknown forces that we're asked to solve in the specific problem for unknowns in specific problem. And that might change. Maybe you're asked to figure out what the forces are. Maybe you're asked to figure out what the angles are uh, that the forces need to be at. But what we're going to be doing is solving the two equations, uh, one equation right here and two equation right here. So we're going to be solving those two uh, equations of equilibrium together. So now what we can do is we can look in an example. And for this example, I've drawn a simple type of uh, diagram right here. It's a a block that's suspended with two different ropes and the block has a weight of 500 pounds. And what we're asked to do is we're asked to figure out what the forces in the rope AB are. So what's this force right here? And what's this force right here, the rope in uh, the force in rope AC. So if we follow our checklist, step one 
is to draw a free body diagram of this block. And I should also just mention, we are still assuming everything that we're using is a particle. So it has no dimensions. Uh, the length, you know, this has no, no length. Uh, so if we look at drawing the free body diagram, what forces do we have on this? Well, we do have one force, we have the weight force, and the weight force is already in pounds. So we don't need to go and multiply it by gravity because it's already in a unit of force. So we're gonna have 500 pounds that points straight down. The other forces that act on this block are these two rope forces. So if we cut the rope and we cut the rope, what we're going to have, and let me keep the colors together, uh, we're going to have a tension force in rope AB, Tension always points away from our object. So this is gonna be some tension AB. And then we're going to have some tension right here. We don't know what this is, so it's gonna be some tension AC. So this is our free body diagram of this, of this block. Two, two rope forces and one weight force. So that was step one. Step two is, is we need to apply my equations of equilibrium. When I apply my equations of equilibrium, I'm going to take equation one, and I'm gonna take equation two, and I'm going to sum all my forces in the x direction, sum all my forces in the y direction. So let me start with the forces in the x direction. If I have the sum of the forces in my x is equal to zero, I'm going to say that anything going to the right is going to be positive. So I'm gonna make a little distinction there just to remind me that the right is positive. Now I need to look at all these forces. Okay, well, TAB, if I break this force up, I have some force that goes like this. I have some force that goes like this. If I look at TAC, I have some force that goes like this. I have some force that goes like this. If I look at this 500, pounds this weight I don't have anything in the x direction so I don't need to worry about the weight for right now now these are right triangles uh, in this case this is given as 30 degrees in this case this was given as a uh, three four five so uh, three four five similar triangles so we could use different methods to figure out the components let's look at the x component Let's look at TAB. So we're looking at this component right here. If we look at this component, well, we're going to have, it's gonna be negative, right? It's pointing to the left. It's pointing opposite of this positive direction. So we're gonna have a minus TAB. And we need to pull out that X component. And because we have this type of similar triangle, what we need to do is we need to take the X direction. So this side right here, so this three, and we need to divide it by this five. So it's gonna be three divided by five. This divided by this. And don't multiply it by the cosine or the sine. It's, com it's two different methods. Okay, so this is my tension TAB. Let's look at my tension TAC. So if I look at my tension TAC, uh, we're now given that this is 30 degrees. So to get this component, this X component, we're gonna to need to multiply by one of the rules of Sakatoa, one of the relationships of Sakatoa. If you don't understand Sakatoa, please go look at one of my previous videos where I break down how to figure out if we need to use the sine or the cosine. Uh, but in this case, I'm gonna do it a little faster. And I know that if this is the angle I'm looking for, this is my adjacent, uh, adjacent side. So I need to use the cosine. It's in the positive direction, right? It's pointing to the right. So I'm gonna have plus TAC times the cosine of 30. And that's equal to zero. So that's the sum of the forces in the X direction. I can also look at the, well, I also need to look at the sum of the forces in the Y direction. So if I look at the sum of the forces in the Y direction, and this is equal to zero, 
I'm going to say anything that is up is positive. So let's look at TAB. Well, TAB is up, so TAB is going to be positive. So I'm going to have some TAB. Then I need to look at what side is in the, the vertical direction. So that's a 4. So I'm going to multiply this TAB times a 4 over a 5. Then I need to look at TAC. TAC is also pointing upwards, so TAC is also positive. So I need to add this plus TAC. And in this case, I need to, well, this is going to be the sine of 30. So it's going to be TAC times the sine of 30. And then I need to take uh, into account this weight force. It's pointing downwards. So it's going to be minus 500 is equal to zero. So now I have these two equations. I have applied the equation of equilibrium in the x and the equation of equilibrium in the y directions. So now what I need to do is solve these two equations simultaneously. And it honestly doesn't matter how you solve it. You have two equations, one, two, and you have two unknowns, one, two. So you use these equations together. Um, by just looking at it, I think I'd want to solve this equation to keep everything positive. So I think what I'd want to do is say, all right, so T A C times the cosine of 30 is equal to T A B times three over five. And then I can, Again, it doesn't really matter, but I can solve for TAB a bit easier. So if I just switch the order of this equation, I can say this is TAB is equal to 5 over 3 times TAC times the cosine of 30. Now, what I want to do, I want to take this, this equation I have for TAB, and plug it into this part for TAB. So I'm going to need to scroll down a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to have 5 over 3 times TAC times the cosine of 30 times 4 over 5. So right, all I did was substitute this for, and this is this right here. So I just substituted that into the equation. Now this is going to be plus TAC times the sine of 30 is equal to 500. I'm going to bring 500 over to the other side of the equation. Now, okay, this is good now. Now I only have one equation and I have one unknown. I only don't know what TAC is. So I can combine these two equations. I need to use my calculator to figure out uh, the coefficient in front of TAC and the coefficient in front of TAC, but I can combine this. And I can actually simplify this a little bit. Those fives are going to cancel with each other. Uh, so it's only going to be four thirds to uh, four thirds TAC. Let me just write that. Normally I probably won't write as many steps out, uh, but this is the first time we're doing this type of problem. So 4 thirds TAC times the cosine of 30 plus, well, I know a sine is 1 half, so I can say 1 half TAC or 0.5. Let's, let's do it in terms of decimals. So my calculator will give me 0 0.5 TAC is equal to 500. And let's figure out what this coefficient is going to be. So what this coefficient is going to be, it's going to be, uh, four thirds times the cosine of 30, right? They're being multiplied so that I can just ignore that TAC. Uh, so that's going to be 1.15 plus 0 0.5, 1.65. So this is going to be 1. Uh, 1.15 TAC plus 0 
TAC is equal to 500. Now I can combine these, I can get 1.65 TAC is equal to 500. Just need a little bit more space. And I can get that TAC is going to be 500 divided by 1.65. Again, this is rounding a little bit, so about 303. So TAC is equal to 303 pounds. So that's one of the answers. Last step, I have to take this TAC right here and plug it back into this equation or any part of the equation, but this uh, is an equation I have already for TAB. So if I do that, and I'll do that right here, this is gonna be five thirds times 303 times the cosine of 30. And five thirds, 303 cosine of 30. Four hundred and thirty seven point three. So that tells me that TAB right here is equal to four hundred and thirty seven point three pounds. And this is all approximate, right? This was sort of an approximate number right here. But that's what I get. I get TAB is equal to four hundred and thirty seven point three pounds. I get TAC is equal to 303 pounds. And the last step, I didn't really write this out, but the last step is to check your work. And what you can do is you can take either of these equations right here, and you can just put it back into the equation and see if you get zero or very close to zero uh, with some of this rounding error. So I would take this equation right here just because it's a smaller equation. So I would have minus, so this is a check. I'd have minus 437.3 times 3 over 5 plus 303 times the cosine of 30. And this should get really, really close to zero, maybe within one or two. And I know it won't get exact because of that rounding uh, problem, but if I have 437.3, Three times three fifths plus three oh three cosine of thirty. Yeah, I get very close to zero. Uh, and the, the reason it's not exactly zero is uh, this term right here had some rounding uh, that I used. So these are your answers. Now if you enjoyed this video and it was help, helpful for you, please consider subscribing and the button above my head. And if you want to learn more about statics, please click on the playlist uh, that you see so you can explore some more videos.